There's been many surveys and lots of needs assessments done over the years of what the senior center is. But the one thing that we do know is that community conversations can help drive the future. With me today, Maddie Noonan, Executive Director of the Senior Center. Community conversations, you've got two coming up fairly mm -hmm. quickly, September uh, 13th and 14th, yep. uh, two different times. Why conversation? Mm. What, what don't you get from your surveys and your needs assessments? Yeah, Paula, that's a great question. You know, as you know, over the last couple of years, we've really done some in-depth work, a lot of research into sort of the transformative era that we're in with people, you know, sort of unprecedented living longer lives. It's a global phenomenon. We're seeing it, you know, nationally here in the U.S. and right down to the local level that we really have to change how we operate and how we reach people. Um, you know, and we've done, our, you know, the needs assessment, we've done surveys and all of them have given us a lot of data, a lot of really rich, meaningful information. But you know, nothing really beats the sitting down one on one. Um, you know, sometimes on an individual basis, sometimes in a group, depending on what we're trying to glean um, and garner. But for us, the time that we spend really interacting, um, you know, with our um, citizens and our participants here is so informative to us. And you know, in terms of trying to translate where we are right now in the aging landscape. For us, the community conversation aspect of this was really important because conversation is a two-way street. You know, it's not us talking and people receiving the information. You know, we really learn what the needs of our community that are unique to Barnstable and our seven villages are by taking the time to hear what are the concerns, what are the issues and suggestions that we have from residents of, you know, multiple generations in our community. And, you know, so what we want to do with this community conversation is take an opportunity to share what are our findings, the direction that we're headed, and to learn and, and, you know, for our residents to feel comfortable sharing what their needs are. And then to sort of marry the two as best as we can to help shape our future. And kind of people are saying, well, why now? Why, why are you doing this right now? It's not something that we're just doing now. We are always engaged in multiple ways, um, you know, with what happens here in terms of our programs and services and outreach in the villages. Um, but what's really driving this conversation um, and sort of where the momentum is building right now is because we're approaching our 20th anniversary in June 2019. In many ways, it's hard to believe that the Senior Center is coming up on two decades. Decades. I mean, you know, time flies here. I mean, we always say it never gets old at the senior center because we all, you know, oftentimes, you know, things aren't static. There isn't really a status quo per se. We're always looking at ways that we can make our programs more effective, more responsive. We're constantly evolving as people age. And But what we've seen, and I think what's really, um, you know, sort of the catalyst for having this conversation is the aging of the baby boomer generation. 76 million baby boomers. It's like the biggest generation that this country has ever seen. The oldest baby boomers are now, and they're you know, sort of approaching 72. They're getting close to what would be the traditional age of a senior center participant around the country. 75 is kind of used as the average age. Um, and so as we're looking at the baby boomers, well, you talk about to the ba any baby boomer. They don't want to be labeled. They don't want to be stereotyped. Okay. They are extremely active and engaged, and they're aging on their terms, not on our terms. And so for us, it's kind of forced us to have to really listen to them and be mindful that for senior centers to stay relevant and not to become you know, relics of the past, we have to be open and understanding to a different way of reaching and connecting. And you know, it really is a transformative phase in senior centers across the country. And so we don't look at that as a challenge. We look at that as an opportunity. Because in truth, our senior center is not fixed on one generation. For the last 12 years, when we had gone through a rebranding um, effort, a little bit before um, my time when I came on board, there had been conversations back at that time about changing the name of the facility. Um, because again, the baby boomers at that time were turning 60, which was sort of you know the, the, defin the defined age of an older person. Um, you know, you ask any 60-year-old, what do they say? 60's in your 40. You know, okay. 60 isn't old anymore. People are living long lives. And so for us, we felt it was important back then 
the, the, the decision all kind of came back to keep it as is, keep it as a senior center, but we'll be open to change in the future. But we will add into our logo programs and services for the 50 plus community. We haven't had a lot of 50 somethings coming in our doors. We know why, because a lot of them are working, they're raising families, um, you know, they don't have a lot of time during the day when our you know, traditional hours um, of operation. But a lot of it also is the barrier of the name senior right. center. So it's forcing us to have a conversation. Um, you know, do we con do we stay with the senior center or do we open our mindsets to maybe changing our name? There's a national conversation that's happened. Um, a report was done about uh, two, three years ago. Um, the eight leading agencies on aging in the United States, including the National Council on Aging that represents all of the senior centers across the US, um, AARP, the American Society on Aging, the Gerontological Society of America, they all came together because they understood that the whole conversation around aging is changing. And they commissioned a study using a group called the Frameworks Institute. Um, the study was called Reframing Aging, and some of the key findings from it really do impact what we're doing at the community level. And one of the major findings that relates to us is what we call older people. And so traditionally when people have become over 60, you know, we've called them senior citizens or seniors or elders. Um, you know, what's become more, um, I guess, politically correct and also just more into the mainstream now, and this is being recommended to journalists and to aging professionals, is to reference older people as older adults or older people. Because when you ask somebody what they want to be called, they just say, I want to be called by my name. I don't want to be labeled. <laughs> and we're trying to be understanding and cognizant of that. So in a very you know, deliberate way, we've been trying to minimize, because that was the recommendation, is limit the use of senior or elder, because they denote people of diminished capacity. So the Frameworks Institute did a lot of really in-depth um, work across the country on this. And so what they're recommending is that we increase the use of older adults or older person and limit use of senior senior citizen um, or elder. So, but we're the senior center and we're the senior services division. So as we become more comfortable, you know, using this and, um, you know, it, it, it does it force us to kind of look at, you know, who we are and what we call ourselves. And that really was sort of the driving force and the impetus for having these community conversations is to bring that conversation down to our local level with our community, sharing findings that came out of the needs assessment, um, you know, and, and the survey, which basically in a nutshell said you can't put 50-year-olds and 90-year-olds and their needs and interests in the same category. Right. Um, and so that's the conversation that we want to have is to engage with people of multiple generations. As a 50-plus center, we're serving three generations. Um, and we wanted to bring those generations together and talk about how we can meet everybody's needs um, and make everybody feel like that this is a facility where they can come, not just within the four walls here, but in, in the broader community in Barnstable, how we can help everybody age optimally. Um, and you know, so it's very exciting. We're actually going to be working with a consultant um, who's going to come in. We want this to be a very interactive, participative process. Um, we're looking, you know, we call ourselves the senior center, but we really are a, a, a health and wellness, um, you know, social connection center. We, we're trying to frame this from the mindset that there are seven dimensions of wellness. Um, and we want to look at everything that we do, our core programs, from each one of those dimensions. So it's talking about physical wellness and social wellness and spiritual wellness, environmental wellness, occupational wellness. So we want to look at all of those frames and talk about how, what we're doing currently and how we can grow in each of those um, dimensions to make sure that we're meeting the needs of multiple generations. Right. So these two sessions, uh, the first one's going to be September, I believe, 13th, 13th yeah. at um, 6, p.m. 6 p.m. And then the second one will be that Friday, yeah. September 14th at 10 a.m. Yeah. These are facilitated conversations. This isn't just somebody coming into your great room and putting up a hand say, uh, this is my suggestion. Mm -hmm. The facilitation of these types of conversations really do pull out some of the best ideas. Ideas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and in a very organic way. So, it, you know, I think it's you bring people together, you give them a topic to talk about and ideas spark from there. And so we're going into this with kind of a loose, obviously, we have to have some kind of a framework of what we're trying to accomplish. And all of this, like I said, it all ties into our 20th anniversary. There are rebranding efforts going on in senior centers all across the country. You just have to Google. Um, and, you know, the mainstream media are covering, you know, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times are covering this because, again, 
it's an unprecedented you know opportunity because people living longer again more purposeful lives and keeping people engaged and how social services meet the needs of those people and so for us it was a great opportunity to tie a revitalization effort into a milestone anniversary for us because we get to celebrate our 20th anniversary next year and really look back on you know the past accomplishments how the senior center even came to be and the great improvements we've made you know completing our garden level 10 years ago expanding our parking lot you know growth into new program areas and now reaching new audiences and so the population that we were first opening our doors to 20 years ago many of those people at that time were newly retired looking for ways to stay active and engaged many of those people are still coming here because the senior center has been here it's been keeping them active and engaged and but now what we're seeing is you know 20 years is another generation so now we have that new generation that we're trying to connect with and appeal to but also we want to be very sensitive to the current participants so we're very mindful of the people that have been participating here over the years but we're also you know very open to looking at you know new ways to reach and and you know one of the things that we've learned through the programs that we offer here when we do our intergenerational programming with high school students um, you know and when we bring you know different generations together it can only result in in a beneficial purpose connecting people together gives them a, a whole sense of the lifespan and why it's so important for younger people to connect with older people oftentimes older people that retired here don't have family close by and when they maybe need little extra support in life isn't it nice to have a younger friend that you can call on to kind of help you know and look out for you and and so we want to really just take advantage of the fact that we have this beautiful facility that is the envy of so many communities not just regionally but across the state um, you know that that we want to make sure that we're utilizing it you know to its maximum potential um, and and that we're providing programs that really are needed and I, I have to say it's one of the things that makes me the most proud to have such a staff that our staff don't want to do the same old same old you know we have kind of have this joke in here that it's you know it never gets old at the senior center and it really is true so many people when they walk in here for the first time go wow we never realized there was so much energy and excitement there are so many misconceptions about what a senior center is and how it fits into our community and you know, we sort of want to just take this great opportunity and say, well, what could revitalize our image? And how, what are the best ways for us to reach all of these new audiences that we want to tap into? And, you know, breaking down a lot of the stereotypes, because we are certainly not a stereotypical facility by any stretch. Right. So let's join the conversation yeah. September 13th, 6 p.m. Yes. At the Senior Center, 825 yeah. uh, Route 28. Yeah, Falmouth Road. Yeah. Falmouth Road. And September 14th right. at 10 a.m. Yeah. Um, um, both of those are open to all, all of our residents. residents. All residents are, and you know, the reason we did, it was very intentional for us to offer two separate sessions as well, because we wanted to make sure that people who couldn't come in, you know, either, you know, in the evening or in the morning, that there was more than one opportunity right. to participate. And if people can't come, you know, always give us a call. The staff and I are all, we, we want to hear what people's ideas are. Um, you know, we're having a, a really exciting, this has been a time of just great energy. We really feel the momentum is building. Um, you know, and, and for us, just always taking the time, whether it's, you know, five minutes, you know, 20 minutes, whatever time, if people want to connect us through email, come in in person, we're learning so much through this process that it's only going to end up making the senior center bigger and better, which is what we're always striving to be. And you're right, people are thriving here. We hear that. We hear the stories about how the senior center is, you know, helping people make new connections. When people retire to Barnstable and they don't really have roots in the community, they come in and they volunteer here. They come in and they participate in activities, um, you know, and, and those are always the kind of of really gratifying, heartwarming, um, you know, when we look at the reason that why we exist in over 20 years, all of the richness that we've brought into people's lives, I think it's a great testament to the vitality, um, you know, that, that exudes here. Excellent. Come be part of the conversation. Yep. September 13th and 14th at the Barnstable Senior Center. We're looking forward to what you have to say.